Hey everybody, Jeffrey Powers here for another Build Day TV. I'm here with, of course, my friend Alistair Cook, uh, all the way in New Zealand. How's it going, Alistair? It's nice down here. It's uh, nice to be indoors today. Actually, it's a bit windy outside. All right, well, today we're going to be talking AWS Networking Transit Gateway. It's not like Transit Authority, which was a great band, uh, but it's a gateway. Tell us a little bit about it. Sure. Um so we spent the last couple of episodes talking about connecting VPCs to things. And we looked first at connecting VPCs to VPCs through VPC peering. That was two episodes ago. And in the last episode, we looked at connecting a VPC to our on-premises network using a, a, a um, private gateway, a virtual private gateway. And what we saw is that each of these was a one-to-one -one relationship. Okay. That every time we needed to add another VPC, we were adding another thing, and we had to update route tables everywhere, every time. And lots and lots of updates to lots and lots of route tables, which is lots of complexity. And everything, every time we change one place, we have to change all of the other places. And I think, Jeffrey, that was what you saw in this, was the potential for a lot of complexity yeah, as we're absolutely. joining things together. Okay. So... The objective with Transit Gateway, and I kept saying, this is really complex if you don't use Transit Gateway. Well, now we're going to use Transit Gateway, and we're going to see things a little more simply. Transit Gateway is a relatively new service. It's, it's been around for about a year and a half, a little over, and it provides the central hub for our routing. And because it's got Transit in its name, it suggests we get to do transitive routing. So that means that if two virtual private clouds VPCs connect to a single transit gateway. It's not just that they can both talk to the transit gateway, but they can talk to one another through the transit gateway. Okay. And in this way, we can have a single central place where we control all the routing, both from VPC to VPC, but also from VPC to on-premises, either using the VPN that we showed in the last episode or using a direct connect. All right. So transit gateway is our central point. It's our gateway between the different elements that we join together. So when we connect a VPC to a transit gateway, we do this by an attachment. So we deploy the VPC, the uh, transit gateway thing, and we attach it to a um, attach a VPC to the transit gateway. And it's vaguely like setting up VPC peering, but we get an attachment ID for it, and then we have one attachment to a transit gateway per VPC. But we also have to specify which subnets in the VPC we're going to attach. And this immediately feels like these subnets are the only ones that are going to be able to talk to the transit gateway, but that's not the case. We have to connect, we can connect only one subnet per availability zone. But this allows us to, uh, that all subnets in the availability zone can then use the transit gateway. Okay. So the other element in this is that we do our, our route table updates only once. So we update the transit gateway as the destination for routes for our internal network. And then we don't need to come back when that internal network changes. And we usually use really broad routes, really all encompassing routes. What we really like to have is the ability to say to the transit gateway, uh, to, to, sorry, to, to say to the VPC, send all of the internal traffic to the transit gateway. We've usually got a route to the internet through an internet gateway, but send everything internal to the transit gateway. Uh, and then we don't need to make changes to each VPC as new VPCs are attached to the transit gateway. And that gets us away from that problem of having to update route tables again and again and again. Okay. So what it looks like is this. I've drawn out three different VPCs here. Each one still has its own unique CIDR range, so 10.12 for the pasta VPC. 10.64 for my pizza VPC and 10.13 for my dessert VPC. Each of them is attached to the transit gateway and we've got a transit gateway attachment ID. And then the route tables on those three VPCs each say the entire internal network, the 10.0.0.0 network is reachable through the transit gateway. All right. And then the, within the transit gateway, we simply have a route table that says to get to each of these smaller networks, you go through an attachment. And in this way, the pasta VPC can talk to the pizza VPC and the dessert VPC. And if I added another VPC, then all four of them would be able to talk to each other without changing the route tables on all of the existing VPCs. 
So you can see an immediate benefit over doing meshed VPC peering where you have to update every VPC for every new VPC. But we can also use the same transit gateway to connect all of our VPCs back to on-premises. We can do this either through a VPN or through a thing called Direct Connect. Uh, we looked at VPNs in the previous episode, it's the same technology here. With Direct Connect, it's a different technology. It allows us to connect from on-premises to transit gateway using a dedicated private one gig or 10 gig ethernet connection. We'll do another video on that. We'll, we'll look at uh, Direct Connect in another Build, Build Day TV episode because we're going to actually get uh, a, an actual stood up real Direct Connect environment to look at and it's really unusual to get that opportunity. Okay. When we're using a VPN, we do need a customer gateway. Remember from the previous episode, customer gateway was a placeholder inside of our AWS configuration that really meant our on-premises router. And that was where we got, got the VPN configuration out of the AWS and could place it directly into our on-premises router. So we do need a, a customer gateway defined for the VPN. One of the fundamental differences for the transit gateway VPN is it supports multi-pathing. With VPC-based VPNs, we can stand up two VPN tunnels, but only one of them will be used. And that gives us a maximum uh, throughput of about one and a quarter gigabits per second. With the transit gateway VPN, we can have more than two tunnels. Uh, from what I've read, AWS has tested this with 40 tunnels, giving 50 gigabits per second worth of aggregate throughput. So the transit gateways VPN is more capable than the VPCs VPN. So you said that's 40 at 50 or it's 40? 40 times one and a quarter. Wow. So 40 tunnels, each of which will deliver one and a quarter gigabits per second for an aggregate of 50 gigabits. 50 per gigabits, second. okay. And it, it use, uses um, uh, multi-pathing between them. Okay. So when we do connect back to on-premises, uh, we then just add an additional route. Here I've, I've drawn a VPN connection back to the restaurant HQ. Uh, the restaurant HQ is also inside our 10.0.0.0 network. Um, so that route from all of the VPCs pointing to the transit gateway includes the route down to our, our restaurant HQ network. And then in the transit gateways route table, it's just got a definition that the restaurant um, network of uh, the restaurant HQ network of 10.130.00 slash 10 goes down to the restaurant HQ attachment. Okay. So still really simple route tables going on in here and really broad encompassing kind of route tables rather than having to have lots and lots of detailed entries. Okay. While we are talking about route tables, I realized that we hadn't talked about one of the fundamental issues or our concepts within route tables, which is the precedence of the rules in a route table. So I want to step back from the AWS part and talk a little bit about general TCP routing. Uh, when we've got a route table that has multiple routes that might be for the similar destination, there's some rules around how those route tables are used and those routes are used. And the basic rule is that you send the traffic down the route that matches the smallest range. So if I've got a, a specific network, so inside my VPC, the default route table says the entire route is local. So for the pizza one, it says that 10.64.0.0.16 is local. But that 10.64.0.0.16 lives inside the 10.0.0.8, which I've said you reach through the transit gateway. And so there's a potential conflict here. The rule is that the, the subnet that is the smallest and therefore has the, the largest number at the end of the CIDR is the preferred route. So where there's overlaps, we go to the, the, um, the smallest subnet. And this allows us to have much more uh, simple route tables. So instead of having to have a route table that avoids this, this overlap and, and having to separately define all of my 10.64.x subnets to avoid the overlap, we can just have this uh, all-encompassing broad rule that is used and then have smaller side arranges for subnets for, for exceptions to the broad rule. And then of course, we usually have a 0, 0, 0, 0, slash 0. This is a, if nothing else in the route table matches, use this and it's often referred to as the last resort route and it's used to get to the internet. So a fairly common pattern that we see in a route table 
is that on AWS, we'll have the, the default entry for the entire VPC. And you can't remove this. And that's our, our 10.64.0.0.16 in this case. The entire VPC is local. Okay. And then below that, I've got two really broad routes. One that is that the entire 10.0.0.0 uh, network range is accessible through the transit gateway. And then I've also got a 192.168 range that's accessible through the transit gateway gateway but these are both very broad ranges that are accessible but they're all private ranges i haven't so far given you any way to reach public ip addresses so at the bottom we have our last resort route that goes to the internet gateway i haven't told you another way to reach the destination just send it to the internet gateway okay it's a, a really common stand, uh, way of setting up route tables uh, both on on aws but also in general is that we set some reasonably broad routes on our subnets that are sent to a smart router that then decides where to send things. We usually have a last resort to go to the internet. Sometimes the, the last resort and, and the, even the, the broad routes are just sent to the smart router. But on, on AWS, it's common to separate those out. So popping back to our transit gateway, it is our hub for routing between multiple VPCs in your on-premises environment. It allows you to unify the routing between all of your VPCs and your on-premises and really simplify how your routing is configured. The transit gateway uses attachments. The thing that is a connection between a VPC or on-premises to the transit gateway is an attachment. And then we have a route table on the VPCs that we're connecting that have a simple route through to the transit gateway. Back to on-premises, we can either use a VPN or we can have direct connect for our connectivity from the transit gateway back to on-premises. Okay. Cool. That's our transit gateway. Stay tuned in the next video for some hands-on where I will build and demo a transit gateway. Absolutely. And, and of course, uh, if you want to, go ahead, subscribe and like and comment here. We'll... Uh... We'll try and uh, do an episode uh, Q and A uh, in the future that will answer, hopefully, answer your questions there. So, until the next one, we'll see you.